Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and welcome to Pack Vember. <coughs> Throughout the month of November, I, among several other YouTube users who, um, I don't know who's doing them yet, but we will be making uh, videos all month regarding Packard Bell computers from the 1990s. Which, um, to be honest with you, on, on this particular channel, the Nostalgia Mall, uh, that's uh, more than half of my videos, but still, let's, let's just go with this, okay? So, I'm not sure if I'll be doing a video every week about Packard Bell. Maybe something different each week, but there's going to be uh, more videos than usual this month regarding Packard Bell, which I think you guys will find quite interesting. I haven't decided um, exactly what the topics will be yet, except for um, this video, of course. And speaking of this video, let's uh, go ahead and jump right into it. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. We're going to take a closer look in this video on some of the more common mid-90s Packard Bell CRT monitors. Just so you can get an understanding of what they are, what to look for, and what may work best for you for your Packard Bell computer. The first monitor we'll be looking at today is the 14-inch uh, um, analog version of the uh, Packard Bell CRT monitor. And this is, this was pretty much in 1995 or so the cheapest option for a monitor from Packard Bell. As a matter of fact, this is the same model right here that originally shipped with my childhood computer, the Legend 822 CDT. And so, um, as you can imagine, this is a very basic monitor. There's no digital controls on it whatsoever. All of the controls are you are done with these uh, dials, these analog dials right here, if you can uh, see them. Right now, you there's your uh, horizontal size, horizontal position, vertical size, vertical position, brightness, and contrast. Okay, taking a look at the rear, we can see that this is a, um, the particular model is a 142S. And this particular one was manufactured September of 1994. Now, Packard Bell manufactured these uh, for several years. Um, actually started making these in 1994, and I think they made them up until about 1997, 1998, I want to say. And the connectors on the back, you have um, your power, which uses your standard uh, PC-style connector and we have a non-removable VGA cable. Now this applies to all three of the uh, monitors we'll be looking at today but these monitors um, include the provision for having these two stereo speakers on the side of them. Now sometimes you may find a monitor that does not now sometimes you may find a monitor that does not have the speakers on them for some reason. And if you do so, um, the, the speakers are very easy to come by on eBay for very reasonable prices, believe it or not. And the uh, speakers, um, you don't even need them to use the monitor, of course. You can just use regular old speakers if you prefer. There are t two types of uh, Packard Bell uh, monitor speakers that you can choose from. And I'm not really going to be able to show them on camera, but both are essentially the same. The only difference is uh, some have a headphone jack and the others do not. That's all there is to it. And here's how the monitor looks when it is turned on and showing a picture. Now, uh, I will admit, the quality of this monitor, the picture quality, is not the best you'll find on a CRT monitor of the time. 
but you know what it gets the job done and besides this is what I grew up with so it's normal to me <laughs> now the reliability of these monitors um, is not really the best um, as a matter of fact the original monitor that came with the with my childhood computer the 822 which also had the same model monitor died sometime around 1998 and so we had to go to a local computer shop and replace it with a uh, non-matching Gateway 2000 monitor which we used on that computer for the remainder of its time with us until we gave it away in the year 2000 so um, mileage will vary on these uh, monitors also worth noting I am running this monitor at a resolution of 640 by 480 the um, monitor is also capable I believe of 800 by 600 as you can see right there and I believe you can also crank it all the way up to 1024 by 768 actually you cannot <laughs> could just be a refresh rate problem but um, yeah, it seems to be 800 by 600 is the highest you can go comfortably on this. So let's just wait for it to correct itself. And I will take it back down to 640 by 480 because that's what I typically keep this at. Next up we have this um, other Packard Bell monitor that's quite similar to the last one we looked at. Except this one I think is a little bit bigger. I believe it's a 15 inch uh, monitor. But this one has digital controls. Well, for the most part, um, you have buttons here to uh, control your uh, horizontal position, horizontal size, vertical position, vertical size, your, uh, and these two little doodads right here, and you can adjust it with these buttons right here. But you still have to control your brightness and contrast with these analog knobs right here. But as you can see, it is quite similar to the last one we looked at, just a little bit bigger with some more features. Okay, as you can see, this monitor's uh, model number is 1511SL, and this particular one was manufactured February of 1995. You have your uh, power input here, and unlike the last monitor, the VGA cable is actually detachable from the monitor, which is very, very convenient. And here it is um, with the computer turned on. And by the way, the computer we have it hooked up to is the Legend 406 CD, running Windows 3.1 this time. And the picture quality um, is a little bit sharper than the 14-inch uh, uh, analog model. But again, probably not the most uh, amazing monitor ever created. And just for demonstration purposes, um, to uh, adjust any of these settings, you hit the select button and this green light will come on and you keep hitting it until the green light appears to where you want to adjust. And then you can adjust down or up. And here's the biggest and fanciest Packer Bell monitor that you could get back in the mid-90s. This is the 17-inch model that is fully digital. In fact, I think it, I read somewhere it may have a Sony tube in it. But I am probably wrong. I read that years ago, and I might be uh, remembering it completely incorrectly. But anyway, if you wanted the best monitor that Packard Bell could provide back in the day, this is what you would get. Oh, and it is a behemoth. It's very heavy, too. <laughs> you can see the speakers look smaller on it, but the speakers are the same size as they were on the other two monitors. It's just the monitors so big they look smaller. <laughs> Okay, this model is the 3020, 
and this one in particular was manufactured in May of 1996 and I believe they made these between uh, 1995 and 1997 or so haven't really done enough research on that and by the way notice that it was made in Taiwan I forgot to check the other two monitors but they were probably made there as well and for uh, connections we have um, power and a non-detachable VGA cable like the 14 inch model okay and here's the monitor turned on and as you can probably see this one has the uh, best picture out of the three because again this is the uh, nicest model you could have gotten back then controls are completely digital in fact you get this uh, nifty little control screen here where you can control your contrast brightness you can degauss the monitor, horizontal position, horizontal size, vertical position, vertical size, vertical pin cushion, trapezoid, rotation, color, display frequency, video level, language, and recall. So all your controls are, are completely digital, which is really, really nice. I'm currently running this monitor at 800 by 600. However, you can also uh, go higher than that to 1024 by 768. And you can attempt at least to go to 1280 by uh, 1024, which I would not recommend doing on this monitor. So let's just take it back down to a more reasonable. 800 by 600. Now one problem that this monitor has, in fact I think it's uh, a problem with all these uh, 3020 monitors because I have another one in the closet given to me by LGR and it has the same problem. A lot of times it's not really happening right now the um, picture will drift out of position and I have to fix it by um, half halfway pressing the power button. As you can see, it's um, just by doing that I've kind of messed it up. <laughs> and so it's, like I said, I think it's with all these uh, monitors that have this um, that seem to have this problem. And I don't know what there's a way around it. I'm not a uh, monitor a CRT monitor technician I don't like opening these things up and so those are the three main monitors that you could have gotten back in the mid 90s for your Packard Bell computer there are several other Packard Bell monitors that were available but I do not currently own there was this older model monitor from the early 90s used up until 1994 when Packard Bell changed its logo You'll see this one used on a lot of 386 and, late, and later 486 models. There was also the very rare black Packard Bell monitor that went with a matching black Packard Bell computer, both of which are very, very rare. And finally, there was this model introduced sometime in the late 90s with quite a very interesting design. Unfortunately, I have never seen any of these monitors in person. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this first edition of Pack Vember. If you're interested in making your own Pack Vember video, um, there is a link to the Pack Vember uh, transparent logo in the description below. It's linked to my uh, Dropbox account. Hopefully, um, that will work. And be sure to use the hashtag Pack Vember in your video's title and or description. And so hopefully we get a lot of uh, interest in this. So anyway, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. 
Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.